Welcome back everybody, my name is Tucker and in today's video we're doing an NBA trade machine on the Toronto Raptors. And this is a really interesting team to take a look at for this offseason. They're obviously a little bit over a year removed from a championship. And then this past season, they almost made the conference finals once again after a tough series loss to the Boston Celtics. So clearly even without Kawhi, uh, there's a group here that can be really competitive deep into the postseason. And they have plans moving forward to be big players in 2021 free agency in which they're going to have a ton of cap space and possibly a pitch to some of the top free agents, including Giannis Antetokounmpo. So some of the moves that they can make this offseason as it relates to trades are going to be looking more towards that 2021 target, but also making this team as competitive as possible for next year to make them even more intriguing for free agency, but also just because they have a competitive roster that could potentially do some things at the top of the Eastern Conference. And that is what we're going to be talking about in today's video. Some possible trades that you guys sent over to me as well as a few of my own. But really quickly, if you're enjoying the content, then consider subscribing to the channel. That way you're up to date every single time that I upload a video, which is about five to six times a week and leaving a like rating is a great way to let me know not only that you're enjoying this type of content but also it helps the video out a ton on youtube as well and if you haven't already you should come check me out on twitch we're streaming the call of duty cold war beta today today's the first day that we can play it on pc i will be streaming that from 11 to 4 today uh, it's probably pretty likely that i'm live right now if you guys want to come hang out talk about basketball talk about whatever you should check it out at twitch.tv slash spolo underscore td with that said, let's go and get started. Okay, so our first trade is from Clint Irving over here on Twitter. And I, I don't really know why I like this trade, but for some reason, something about this I really, really like. So the Raptors are getting Montrezl Harrell, Landry Shaman, and the Clippers are getting Kyle Lowry and Patrick McCall. And with Marcus Gasol supposedly going back to, to playing internationally and not returning to the Raptors, there is a bit of a need for, for a player at the five spot here, depending on what happens with Serge Ibaka in Toronto. And the Montrose Harrell thing has been kind of rumored. Now, there's a couple of different layers to this trade. One, it's does it make sense. Two, do the, do the pieces match up? And three, what kind of contract is Harrell going to sign? But for whatever reason, when you're just looking at the pieces here and you're taking out the free agency stuff, how much is Harrell going to cost, blah, 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 blah. This is really intriguing for me for a couple of reasons. One, for the Clippers, I think this is really, really good value for Harrell and Shaman. Even though I like Shaman as a shooter moving forward, uh, Harrell showed himself to be just not a very good postseason player this year, uh, unfortunately. And Lowry being there as a, a point guard that can get the team organized, that's a really good defender that fits in well with how the rest of that roster is constructed, I think really, really works for the Clippers. Uh, and they can kind of figure out the five spot later, but I don't think that Hero is really a long-term option for them anyway, and they don't really want to pay him in the first place. So that's a really interesting option. Now for Toronto, I don't like it as much for a few reasons. One, I don't think that it's all that likely that they tried trade Kyle Lowry this off season, maybe during the season, I don't know. Uh, but it just seems unlikely right now that he is going to be a movable piece, unless it's in exchange for like a big, big time star. Uh, and then the other part of this is they would have to sign Harold to a new contract when they bring him in because he's a free agent and then that interrupts, you know, whatever they're trying to do with free agency in 2021, which we'll talk about a good amount throughout this video. So I don't love that part, but when you're just looking at the roster, having Montrez Harrell on this roster, you still keep Van Vliet, uh, you do whatever you do potentially uh, next off season in free agency, see Ackman Harrell in the front court, I don't know. It, it's just at the very least interesting and I appreciate you sending it in. Okay, next up now, we have a trade that I came up with and it's our obligatory Victor Oladipo trade at this point. I know he came out and said that he doesn't want to leave, but it's still an interesting scenario to take a look at, specifically if for a team like Toronto that, you know, can bring in someone like Oladipo that is an expiring contract because they want expiring contracts anyway, even though he is presumably a really good player as long as he comes back healthy. So this deal is weird because it's difficult for me right now to really put a finger on how much value Victor Oladipo holds in a trade. So in this scenario, the Raptors are getting Oladipo in exchange for Norman Powell, Terrence Davis, and an unprotected first round pick from Toronto. Here's the mindset here when you're looking at the trade package. So Powell at times looked like a really, really good player for Toronto. Had his struggles at times in the postseason, uh, but I think he's at the very least a, a relatively valuable asset uh, for Indiana, still pretty young. And then Terrence Davis is another guy that has shown flashes, certainly potentially being a pretty good player. And then you're getting the first round pick as well. The reason there's not more compensation here is because the free agency part of Victor Oladipo, you don't want to be giving up too much for what could potentially be a rental. And two, the injury stuff, you don't know how he's going to come back, which probably is going to mean that Indiana isn't going to trade him at this point. But if he was to be traded, I think this is right around the value that you would expect. And I think that Indiana would be at least relatively excited to get a pick, to get two uh, nice wing players to kind of grow and develop moving forward. And for Toronto, not only are they getting Oladipo, but Powell is one of like two or three, like him and Siakam are the only two players under contract 
for that 2021 offseason. So this opens up even more cap space for them while they're also getting Oladipo. Now, whether or not he's going to be healthy, whether he's going to get back to all NBA caliber form, I don't know. But that three man group of Lowry, Oladipo, and then Siakam, and then whatever they want to do in 2021 free agency, bringing back Oladipo, uh, bringing in someone like Giannis, bringing in whoever, I think is a really, really interesting dynamic. And it's the reason why not only in this trade, but also the other trade that I came up with that's showing up later in this video is for another borderline star ish player on an expiring deal. I think that's a really interesting option for Toronto because of of what they've got going on next off season, potentially make a trade for someone like that, bring them back and bring in another guy is kind of their way of bringing in two max players in that off season. Up next now we have our also obligatory, really, really complicated deal at this point. This is a couple episodes in a row now that we've had an incredibly complicated deal. And this one is from Sue over on Twitter. He said, the Raptors have a bunch of expiring contracts and old players they need to build around Pascal. Uh, the Raptors were intrigued to build Lamelo, to pick Lamelo. excuse me. This is if the Sixers want to win now with Lowry's leadership. Lowry's also from Philly. So here's the deal. Kyle Lowry goes to Philadelphia along with a second round pick and two firsts, one of which is top eight protected, the other of which is lottery protected. The Raptors get James Johnson, Jacob Evans, Josh Okoge, Amari Spellman, Jarrett Culver, a second round pick, a top 10 protected 2023 pick for Minnesota, and the number one pick in the draft, and the Timberwolves get Ben Simmons and OG and Obi. So let me tell you the one problem that I have right off the bat here, and then we'll talk about the trade as a whole. So I don't understand why Philly is only getting Lowry and two protected picks in exchange for Ben Simmons. And I understand that these are far in the future, you know, 2025 could be a good pick, but it's lottery protected. So it, best case, it's gonna be like 15 or 16. Uh, and then 2021 top eight protected for Toronto. I mean, they're gonna be a good team. Like they're not gonna, uh, I mean, that pick's gonna be in like the twenties, you know what I mean? And if you're looking strictly at that part, I, that's not enough value for Ben Simmons, in my opinion. That's the first issue that I have here. And it feels like Toronto is getting more value for Kyle Lowry than the Sixers are for Ben Simmons. And that just, that, that, that feels weird to me. So. Um, in this scenario, I guess Toronto wants to go and get LaMelo Ball. This is a crazy, crazy deal. Um, and they're getting all these pieces. Yeah, add some cap space, but you know, James Johnson is the big one. He's going to be an expiring. You bring in LaMelo, uh, and then you have an opportunity to make a big swing in free agency in 2021 as well. There's a lot of picks going around here. The thing for Minnesota is, I mean, you're looking at, so they're giving up the first overall pick in this draft, which by the way, they'd have to draft the player and then trade them to make this deal work because they're already giving up their pick next year, right? So they're losing their pick this year. They don't have it next year. They're trading a 23 and a 25 pick. That's a lot of draft picks moving forward for Minnesota not to have. And I know that they're going to have, you know, Simmons, Ananobi, Towns, and D'Angelo Russell. And that's a really exciting group. But this is also Minnesota, probably historically the worst franchise in league history in terms of the lack of success since they've been a part of the NBA. And that's just a lot of picks to give, give up for a team that historically does not perform well in the regular season. So in terms of where all the pieces go, I think it's at least relatively interesting. The Sixers getting a perimeter guy in Kyle Lowry that can really help them. Uh, and the Timberwolves going with this really nice four-man group that is now including Ananobi and Ben Simmons, assuming they re-sign Ananobi. Uh, and the Raptors getting a young player in Culver and, a, for, and the first overall pick in the draft and an extra pick moving forward as well. There's some interesting pieces here. I don't think it quite comes together maybe the way that you would have hoped that it would, uh, but it's very, very interesting to at least look at. Okay, next up at number four is the other trade that I came up with, and the Raptors in this deal get LaMarcus Aldridge in exchange for Norman Powell, Terrence Davis, and a lottery protected 2020 pick. So a very similar structure to the Victor Oladipo trade, except there is a protection on that pick, uh, simply because I just think that LaMarcus Aldridge has slightly less value at this point than Victor Oladipo. But again, it's difficult to put value on someone like that that we haven't really considered to be a tradable asset to this point. So for the Spurs, it, I already gave this spiel for the for the Pacers, right? I mean, Norman Powell, Terrence Davis, depending on how you like those players, they could be pretty good players moving forward and you get the pick. LaMarcus Aldridge is an expiring contract uh, for Toronto that can help them uh, you know, at the five or the four spot moving forward. And then they have the cap space in 2021 to chase a guy, re-sign Aldridge, re Aldridge, excuse me, uh, and then move forward from there. So I don't really have to speak on this too much. It's a similar situation to Oladipo, but these are the kinds of deals that I would like to see the Raptors at least take a look at because they, like I said, they have the opportunity, they have all this cap space to where if they can bring in someone on a one-year deal that helps them remain competitive this year, make their free agency situation look even better, and then re-sign them next year, I think that is probably the most viable option rather than some kind of crazy, you know, Kyle Lowry trade or, or signing trade Van Vliet. Um, 
I think that really would be the option that I would look at if I was Toronto. And last up, Will sent a trade uh, involving Andre Drummond in which the Raptors received Drummond in exchange for two second round picks. And I threw this one in here because I think Andre Drummond is an interesting trade candidate because you'd first look at this and you think, how is Andre Drummond only worth two second round picks? Well, I mean, Cleveland gave up basically nothing to get him, right? And at this point, it's a similar situation, right? You've got the, the big expiring contract for Toronto, a guy that can help them at the five spot. And Cleveland is just looking to get value. I mean, is Cleveland really looking to spend 20 a year on Andre Drummond in free agency next year? Probably not. So any kind of value they can get would be nice. If you could convince the Raptors to give up a first round pick, that certainly would entice this deal a little bit more uh, for Cleveland. Uh, but ultimately, it's just another one of those trades where you get that expiring contract. You look at 2021, you have Andre Drummond, maybe bring in someone else, re-sign him, and you're not really giving up much. And the Cavs at least get something. But again, they probably would want something a little bit extra here, but maybe not too, too. And yeah, there you have it. That is going to be the end of today's video. And I thank you all very much for watching. Once again, my name is Tucker. If you missed any of my previous videos, then be sure to check out the boxes on screen. Thanks again, and I'll see you all next time.